In this video we will see how to use a TTT gear motor on robotic projects. First we will see what kind of specifications these motors have and what we need to look for when starting a new project. Then we are going to take the motor apart and look inside. To properly understand how to use something we should understand how it works. Next we will assemble a simple circuit which we need to run the motors using the Arduino Uno. And finally we are going to program a simple code and make a test run. I hope you are going to enjoy this video. Ok, first we are going to look at some specifications that are provided by the suppliers. Here for the brushed motor we can see that the operating voltage is 3 to 12 volt DC but they recommend 6 to 8 volt DC. We are going to use 6 volt because we can easily get 6 volt from 4 AA batteries. Rated current for this motor is 0.17 amperes, which is very low and easy to provide. Now the most interesting thing for us is to see the rotational speed of the motor. Motor is specified to deliver 17,000 rotations per minute at 6 volt, but no torque is specified. Torque is very important characteristic of a motor for robots. It basically allows motors to move mass. Brushed motors are rarely used in robotics without a gearbox. When we simply add a gearbox to a motor, we get a gear motor. This gear motor has the same operating voltage as the brushed motor inside it. These motors have current specified by the load on the shaft. The bigger the load, the more current motor must take from the power source. All of the gear motors come with the specification of a gear ratio, which basically says by how much we reduce the initial speed of a motor. Brushed motor attached to this gearbox has 17,000 RPMs at 6 volt. When we divide that with 48, we get around 354 RPMs or around 6 rotations per second. And this is done because by decreasing the speed of a motor we have proportionally increased the torque this motor is able to exert. Which means that this motor is now usable for robotic projects. Now let's take it apart and see how it looks from inside. I will now quickly disassemble the motor to see the inner components. This here is the brushed motor. Opening the gearbox housing we can see the gears and the shafts. Now we will open the motor, here you can see the brushes, let's get the rotor out. And this is the stator with two permanent magnets. I will now quickly assemble it back and connect it to a battery. I have switched the wires to show that you can connect the VCC and ground in both ways. Let's take a closer look to the components. Before that let's discuss the polarity of DC brush motors. As mentioned before they don't care about polarity and you can easily change the direction of rotation by simply switching the wires. On the left side you can see the configuration of wires which provides a clockwise rotation and on the right side you can see the opposite. That's important to take into account before we connect the motor to the driver. Here are the components that we saw during the disassembly of a gear motor. The main components are the gears which create speed reduction by 48. These are simple plastic spur gears. You can find the 3D models in the description below. You can take a closer look by opening a model with a free step viewer. Simply google it and download the software. Now let's take a look inside a brushed motor. Here we have a stator with two permanent magnets, brushes and their housing, and topmost is the rotor which contains the commutator and an electromagnet. Now let's take a look at how this looks like in action. Here we have an animation of the gear motor in motion. Let's cut the gearbox housing and see the gears. Here you can notice the speed reduction by first looking at the brushed motor shaft and then looking at the output shaft of the gear motor. Remember that by doing this we have increased torque which we need to move the mass. Now let's cut in the brush motor. It's important to mention that this speed which you are seeing is much less than the actual speed at which this motor is rotating. This is far from 17,000 RPM. Now you can see the rotor rotating inside the stator. Now the most difficult components to understand without seeing them in motion are the brushes and the commutator. Here you can see a slow motion how these components interact with each other. 
There are three separate plates which create the commutator, the same number as coils. Each plate is connected with two coils. There are two brushes and each one is touching only one commutator plate at a given time. One brush is connected to the positive voltage and the other to the ground. In this way electrical current is able to create an electromagnetic force causing the rotation of the shaft. Ok, this is quite enough understanding to get us started working with motors. Now let's connect the wires to be able to use these motors. Let's see what components we need to make this simple project. We will need two TTT gear motors and one Arduino Uno and L298N motor driver. First we connect the motors with the motor driver. As mentioned before, brushed motors don't care about polarity, so it doesn't matter where we connect VCC and where the ground. Here I have decided to use uneven numbers for the positive voltage, so I will connect VCC to output 1 and ground to output 2. We will do the same for the other motor, connecting positive voltage to output 3 and ground to output 4. Powering the L298N is done on these screw terminals. The left one plus 12 volt is the connection for the motor's power supply and we will connect here the 4 AAA batteries which amount to 6 volt. But after we have uploaded the code into Arduino Uno. For now let's connect middle terminal, the ground, to Arduino's ground and terminal on the right to 5 volt Arduino pin. These two connections are made so that we can power up the Arduino after we have uploaded the code and connected the battery. Here is the short overview of how it looks so far. Now let's focus on connecting the control digital pins. First remove the jumpers if present on the enable pins. Now we are going to connect these enable pins for motor A and B to Arduino's pins which are able to provide speed control. These pins are pin D3 and D6. They are digital output input PVM pins. Now we are going to connect the direction control pins for the motor A. Input 1 and input 2 go to D2 and D4 respectively. We are going to do the same for the motor B, connecting the direction control inputs 3 and 4 to D5 and D7 respectively. Here is the overview of how it looks after the wires have been connected. Now that we have seen step by step what to do, let's test if it works. I have pre-soldered the wires on the motor and attached them for the counterclockwise rotation according to the previously shown wiring animation. First we need to loosen up the screw terminals on the L298N. Positive voltage goes to output 1 and ground to output 2. Positive voltage from the battery goes to plus 12 volt screw terminal. Then we need to connect the grounds of a battery and the ground of the Arduino. Important hint for electronic beginners, always connect all of the electronics to the common ground. The third terminal is used to power up the Arduino. Now we are going to attach the control jumper wires to enable one, input one and input two pins on the L298N. Purple wire is used for the speed control. The final step is to connect the wires to the Arduino. Ground from the L298N goes to the ground pin GND and 5V goes to the 5V pin on the Arduino. Lastly we have to make sure that the purple wire goes to the PVM pin. In this case that's D3. Ok, everything is ready for the code. First we need to set up the variables. We need 6 integers, one for each pin on the L298N. Then we are going to put a small routine inside the void setup. We need to set the pins to output. Assign the digital states high or low to the directional control pins. And assign a PVM value to speed control pins. Create a short delay, make it stop spinning and let it spin in the opposite direction. You can find the code in the link in the description. That's it, let's see how it works. In the upcoming videos we will start building robots for beginners. If you are interested in robotics, electronics or mechanisms be sure to subscribe. That's it for this video, if you have enjoyed it destroy that like button. Thank you for watching and see you next time.